with the name of Almighty One God, who is most merciful and most beneficent. Dear viewers, my name is Dr. Abu Abdullah and you are watching my channel Real Islam TV. We are discussing the inventions and contributions of Muslims in science in medieval time. Many hundred thousand years <coughs> before development of science in the West. All this science is based on contribution of the Muslims. So today we will be discussing the role of Muslims in establishing libraries. The human tendency of preserving the records of their achievements in various fields of life is very primitive and date back to the beginning of civilization. The birth of Islam provided great impetus to human pursuits of knowledge. The necessity of preserving the Quran and the tradition, which is called Hadith, awakened the spirit of collecting such writings in various forms which paved the way for the establishment of the earliest libraries in the world of Islam. The mosques which during the early decades of Islam formed the nerve centers of all political, religious and educational activities, housed valuable libraries comprising books on religion, philosophy and science. Soon, however, Muslims also who distinguished themselves as the greatest patrons of learning established during the days of their glory some of the biggest libraries of the medieval times. The great intellectuals of their age include Avicenna, the encyclopedist, Ibn Miskave, the historian philosopher, Al Fadl Ibn Nobak and Hamayun ibn Ishaq, the renowned translators were in, entrusted with the responsibility for the organization and maintenance of the libraries. The Caliph Rashida and that of the Ummids were the periods of conquest, consolidation and organization. Now we'll talk the contribution of Muslims in establishing libraries in Umid, Umayyah. Khalid bin Yazid, the learned scientist of the Umayyah dynasty, is credited with being the originator of libraries in Islam. But historical opinion differs on this point. The celebrated Tunisian historian Ibn Khaldun categorically denied the existence of any library during the time of Khalid bin Yazid, while Ibn Nadim, in his well-known Fehrist, Fehrist means list, <coughs> ascribes the opening of the first library of Islam to Khalid. Hazrat Umar bin Abdul Aziz, the pious Umayyah Khalif, had made available to the public the royal library which he had inherited from his ancestors. This clearly shows that foundation of the library was laid along before his time, probably by the learned Khalid bin Yazid. Thus, during the Umayyad Caliph, the literary triers were properly arranged, catalogued, and preserved in a systemic way. Hashim bin Abdul Malik collected a large number of rare manuscripts on various subjects in eluding an illustrated copy of the ancient history of Persia. A large number of books on theology had been collected by Sah. Shahab al Zohri, a well known traditionalist of that age. Besides the above, Abu al Kaloba, Abu Umrao bin al Ala, and Karab bin Muslim had private libraries. These are Arabic names, so it is a bit difficult to announce, pronounce, and understand. Now we'll talk about the Abbasi Caliph, Abbasi reign. 
Under Mamun, the Muslims found the vanguard of civilization. During the time of the early Abbasid Caliphs, every part of the globe was ransacked by the agents of the Caliphs for the broad wealth of antiquity. Mansur was the first Abbasi Caliph who took the active interest in pursuits and propagation of learning. He founded a translation department in which classical and scientific work were translated from various languages into Arabic. The philosophical, mathematical and scientific works of Greek masters, which otherwise would have remained buried in the dark recess of the Greek. According to the celebrated Urdu historian Maulana Shibli Nomani, the Darul Hukma, which in English we can say House of Wisdom, founded by Harun Rashid, which was divided into two sections. One was concerned with the translation work and the other related to the collection of books and housed a big library. Yahya Barmaki, the famous Grand Wazir of Harun had summoned well-known scholars from distant lands who adorned the literary gatherings of the great caliph. Harun Rashid, who had founded a big library in Baghdad, had appointed al Fadl ibn Nobrak, a renowned scholar and translator, as head of his library. The library contained a large number of books, which were efficiently arranged and catalogued. Harun had a great good taste for books and even carried large number of books on his military and other expeditions. Once when he had gone to Rika, he took eight boxes of books with him. His player resort, built on the bank of the Katul Canal, had a library containing about more than 1,000 books. The reign of Manun Rashid, known as the Augustus of Arabs, formed the most glorious period in the field of intellectual achievement of Muslims. He was the moving spirit behind the House of Wisdom, which employed the best brains of the age and acquired astounding success in a short span of 20 years. The library attached to the House of Wisdom was immensely enlarged and was managed by Sahil bin Harun and Said bin Harun, the Persians. A large collection of books of the pre-Islamic era were added to the library. The well-known book binder Ibn Abiul Horasha was employed in the library for binding work. Hamaya Ibn Ishaq, the chief of the translation department, was also made the librarian of this famous library. Among the rare manuscripts preserved in the library were document written on parchment by Abdul Muttalib bin Hashim, who was the grandfather of Prophet Muhammad sallam, and a few writings of Hazrat Ali and Hassan. The interest taken by the Caliph in the accumulation of literary treasures created a taste for books, not only in his associates but also among common men. A number of ministers, officials and wealthy people established big libraries by spending large money. Yahya Barmaki, Grand Wazir of Haram, Harun owned a big library which contained a large collection of Persian and Greek manuscripts. Three copies of each book were kept in his library, which after the downfall of Burmigates were added to the Imperial Library of Mamu. Fateh bin Hakan, the Wazir of Mutwakkal Billah, founded a grand library which contained rare books of an astronomy. Muhammad bin Abdul Malik Zia, Prime Minister of Caliph, Wasik Billah established a private library on which he spent 10,000 rupees of that time. The big library was owned by Allama al Waqidi, which was alleged to have contained 600 camel loads of books, mainly on this historical subjects. The libraries gained as much as popularity that by the close of 11th century AD. <coughs> Uh, 
there existed a network of lit libraries throughout the vast Abbasi Empire and before the Mongol invasion, Baghdad alone had 36 big libraries. Now let us talk about the public libraries. The first public library in Baghdad was opened by Sabur bin Ardeshir, the Prime Minister of Bovied monarch Behl al Dola. This was attached to the academy built by him in Baghdad in 991 AD. Before the establishment of this library, all libraries were privately owned and not open to public. This library of Sabur contained more than 10,000 books. This led to the opening of private libraries in the big cities of the Muslim countries including Baghdad, Cairo, Marv, Mosul and Tripoli. The big college and universities of Baghdad, Nishapur, Merv, Cairo, Damascus, Isfahan, and Ghazni, including the world's famous Nizamiya and Mustansiriya of Baghdad, home splendid libraries. The principal mosques of the big cities of the world of Islam, which served as teaching institution, also had sections obligations, sec sections of libraries attached to them. Now we will talk about Egypt. What was the condition in the Egypt of the libraries by the Muslims? The rise of Cairo under al muiz al muiz Abdullah added a spirit of rivalry on the patronage of learning between the caliphs of the houses of Abbas and Fatima. al muiz has been acclaimed as the Mamun of the West and the Messianians of Muslim Africa. The Fatimid Caliph Aziz and Hakim Billah were also great patrons of learning. Aziz has the distinction of adding an academy of higher education to the famous Al Azhar Mosque, which hosts a big library containing valuable books on Muslim theology, jurisprudence, and philosophy. Caliph Aziz is also credited with founding an imperial library, one of the biggest libraries ever opened in the world of Islam. Allama Makrizi has given its detail in his well-known work Kitab al-Khattat wal-Asar. This library was housed in a part of the imperial palace and comprised its 40 chambers. There had been differences of opinion among writers about the total number of books possessed by the library. According to the estimate of Ibn al-Tanweev, it had more than 200,000 volumes. According to Ibn Ali Wasili, it had 160,000 books. And according to Ibn Abi Tai, it contained more than 600,000 volumes. And according to 600,000 volume, this famous library contained 18,000 books on ancient philosophy and 24,000 copies of Holy Quran. Once there was a reference of Kitabul Ain in the Darbar of Caliph Aziz, the Barbin's court of Caliph Aziz, which was sent for from the library and librarian possessed 30 different copies of the required books. One of these copies was written in the hands of Khalil ibn Ahmad Basri of the author of the books. This library, this library possessed a globe made by Ptolemy which has 2000 to 50 years old. Another globe made by Abu al Hassan Sufi for Azadul Dola, which was purchased for 15,000 rupees of that time. Among the rare manuscripts were specimens of the artistic writings of the renewed calligraphists Ibn Mukla, an autographed copy of the history of Tabri. The Fatimid Caliph Al Hakim laid the foundation of Darul Ilm on the lines of Darul Hikmah means house of wisdom of Mamun. It was rather a river, it was rather a rival institution and was equipped with a splendid library on whose 
upkeep large sums were spent by its patron. Weird scholars and scientists were attached to the library, which was open to the public. Students were encouraged in the research work and special apartments were reserved for this purpose. They were supplied with the stationery free of cost. So, not talking about <coughs> the Spain, the Ummi, Banu Umayya, Umayya Caliph of Spain attained the standards of civilization which was only rivaled by the Abbasis in the East. Their intellectual achievements reached its zenith in the reign of al hakam who himself being a renowned scholar patronized learning and granted, men, granted efficient bounties to the scholars. He founded a library of first magnitude in his capital, Kurdama. According to Philip K. Hiti, al hakam was bibliophile and his agents ransacked the bookshops of Alexandria, Damascus, and Baghdad with a view to buying or copying manuscripts. The books thus gathered are said to have numbered 400,000. Their title filling a catalogue of 44 volumes, in each one of which 20 sheets being an outstanding scholar personally used the large number of these books and wrote marginal notes on most of the manuscripts which made them very valuable to the later scholars. The celebrated caliph paid extraordinary prices for the rare manuscripts and according to Ibn al-Khaldun, he purchased the first copy of Aghani written by al-Safani for a thousand dinar. According to Ibn al-Abar, the poetical work of the library were catalogued in 8880 8, pages. There were employed more than 5,000 calligraphists in the Royal Library for copying the manuscripts. The books were most systematically arranged in the library. There were more than 70 libraries and 1,000 institutions of higher education in Andalusia alone. Besides the imperial and academic libraries, there were libraries owned by scholars and nobles. So this was the situation in the Muslim ruling area, countries, caliphs. So I stop it here and we will continue it in the next recording. Keep on watching my channel.